What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Redemption 46 Studios. I'm Nick. And I'm Curtis. You know the vibes. Y'all seen the picture. Y'all seen the thumbnail. Y'all know why y'all here. MMD, wah, hip performance video. Special Patreon request from Carmen Rodriguez. Long time Thank supporter you, of the channel. Um, I was just trying to glance real quick to kind of see who MMD was before I like was talking crazy or anything and stuff. This was very interesting. It's a six-member uh, comeback project under C Gem. They are moms who were stars but had to leave the entertainment industry due to childbirth and child care. Wow. Seriously? Mm-hmm. Said Shit. the group was made up uh, through a reality TV show called Mama the Idol. Uh, the groups uh, six women had to gather two thousand fan club members and twenty thousand followers on social media, also having to go through various vocal and dance performance missions to improve so that they could be idols. Uh, okay, is this going to say where they came from? One of the girls is the ex, uh, I guess, person who was supposed to be on Wonder Girls. One of the girls was supposed to be on After School. Another girl was supposed to be on Jewelry. Another girl was ex Baby Vox. And the two other girls are soloists. Interesting. Jeez. So, Who I Pip would have been their debut track. So, it would have been here. Okay. Uh, that's an incredibly interesting story. Yeah, because they grown, grown. The leader was born in 81. Wow. Yeah, because even when you said uh, Wonder Girls or whatever, that would have been. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a, yeah. I think, a second gen group. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, no, I'm talking, this is interesting. Um, let me make sure this is set up. Give these ladies the respect they deserve. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, no, so, we can get right into this. Hold on, fuck that. Let me turn y'all up in the headphones, too. Get y'all just do. <laughs> We're getting respected tonight in here, ladies. Hashtag pressure. Lots of pressure. Ratio change. You said mom equals title. That was a bar. That was a bar. <laughs> Who was that? <laughs> Respectfully. Respectfully. Yeah. 
production is nice on here. They had a lot of good switch ups, but then only a three. The high kicks. Oh, that was it. Like a robbery. For three minutes and 11 seconds, there had to have been like, what, three, four beat switches or progressions? Yeah. In a uh, good way, though, of course. Yeah. Um, before we get started, first off, thank you, Carmen. Second off, definitely, definitely. shout out to all like the the women watching this, because um, we never really had this conversation uh, like on camera and just like about K-pop, about how hard it has to be for women idols. Who yeah. there's some women who might be 18 years old who kind of want to start a family or want to have kids and do things. And obviously, you know, you have to make some sacrifices, uh, like, for your career and everything like that. But, you know, we never had, like, a deep talk about uh, just how crazy it might be. Imagine, like, if a girl group, you know, and they all debuted when they were, like, 17 years old. And they're four or five years in. And it is, like, a couple members who want to have, like, a family or a kid or want to do anything. Yes. How that might throw a group off. Where it's just like, well, we can't do our comeback because you know you gonna you know you gotta be away for nine months. You gotta take care of your baby. Um, you know you're gonna probably be on maternity leave, et cetera, et cetera. I can only imagine yeah, all the the touring and everything too. Yeah, like I only can imagine like how hard that is on first off the woman that you know wants to have a kid because I think having children are like is the most beautiful thing in the world. Um, and then just how hard it would be on like your group because you know. One person, whatever one person does affects the entire group uh, when it comes to, like, touring, like, comebacks and everything of that nature. Um, so all that being said, like, I know it's just, like, difficult. We never talked about that. And with that being said, this situation sounds like a beautiful situation where um, almost like, a, ironically, a redemption arc. Yeah. For um someone and uh, I mean that respectfully because I don't want to make it seem like you got to have redemption just because you had a kid, but just like unfinished business, um almost like hey I wanted to you know get into you know K-pop or I was in it before and it didn't work out for me, but now I have the opportunity to do music again, um and just you know really kill the shit probably just yeah. like I kill being a mom and I just think that's really dope and very interesting and that. I would have loved to see, I guess, what type of activities they would have had to do on their show, their backstories and everything. Yeah. And it just, it's, it seems like a lot. Um, but I'm going to let you get your No, no, no. That's, that that's incredibly fascinating as well. And then, you know, absolutely shout out to, you know, anyone who really would have to, you know, even process what it would mean to have to give up, you know, what you, you're passionate about mm -hmm. um, because you want to either start a family or, you know, or have to start a family or whatever the, you know, the case may be. Um, and I just definitely did want to say, like, even the strain that that would put on, like, the actual, you know, family or the actual relationships as well, where it's like, you know, because um, then you would have to be away from them. And, you know, just stuff like that has just got to be incredibly mm -hmm. difficult to manage. And then on top of, you know, everything that's involved in, in the idol, you know, kind of life, you know, whether it's it's touring or, you know, um, new choreos and, and everything else, variety content, like, just whatever goes into promotions and um you know, the countless, you know, kind of aspects that would have to go into those things. So the fact that, you know, um, these ladies were like kind of robbed of that, um, you know, and mm -hmm. honestly, it, it's something that's really sad um, to think about just kind of all those untold stories that would be out there of someone who either went through the training process, you know, graduated or, or kind of had to go away for whatever uh, reason might have been. Um, and I just feel like this, this, you know, kind of platform or them, you know, basically showing that this is, you know, possible, this is something that still can still be done. Um, that, you know, if, if you're not, if you're in your mid twenties or, or, or later, then it doesn't mean your, your career's over because you're not, you know, 17 or, or not, you know, 20 anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. It feels like, you know, don't think it's the end of everything just because, um, you know, just because you, you've had this, um, this um, unplanned kind of event happen, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a metaphor that goes so far beyond even just, uh, you know, maternity or anything, you know. Um, I'm sure there's idols who may have been injured, you know, broken a leg or something, got cut, you know, whatever to get, like just anything um, of that, you know, something that you could all just read into and want to, you know, support. And, you know, and even as you were saying, the social media stuff they had to go through just to garner, 
the following to to be you know seen as marketable as some because I, I don't know what any kind of label situation is really behind them or how big the label is or what mm-hmm. kind of backing uh, financially there would be able to to be put behind them um, so just you know stuff like this is just really incredible to see um, and it, it's really inspiring so and and even if hypothetically like this isn't something that lasts like entirely too long or anything like that mm-hmm. a it makes them feel I'm sure like you know we still did it you know what I mean um, we're still doing what we love and what we worked hard for but even on, on top of that there's gonna be someone you know coming up you know 15 20 years from now maybe 10 years from now maybe longer who's gonna look back on you know people like this and say you know they were what inspired me they were the ones who, who showed me um, you know as we say with the Jesse Owens thing once it's you know it's impossible until it's done um, yep. and then once it's done and you show that it's it's possible t- um, you know for that barrier to be broken um, then you're just creating that next wave of anyone who's going to, you know, come up and, and um, pick up the pieces of kind of, you know, what you had left behind. And I don't mean that in a, you know, disrespectful sense or anything. I mean, in the sense that like the, the seeds that you plant are going to be something that someone else is going to kind of water and allow to, to grow in their own right. And I just think that's incredibly inspiring. Um, and it's something that I really hope for nothing but the best, you know, for this group and everything. Certainly each of them has had their own, um, their own incredible challenges to overcome. And I would assume at the very least um, that the group dynamic, you know, having had to overcome all those things mm-hmm. probably means they're extremely close, um, you know, and had to, I'm sure they've had, you know, so many kind of instances where they either wanted to give up or had those moments where they uh, were barely able to keep going. Um, and I hope that, you know, they were able to rely on each other now kind of, you know, through that as well. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to let you hop back in as well. Yeah, nah, I just was looking at some of the verse structures and stuff and, uh, like, mm. uh, just to see what they were talking about. I like a lot of this. I'll do my own thing on stage again, a familiar feeling, a revived trembling. Oh, the best moment to be painted again. Um, just, you know, things of that nature. Revitalizing that youth, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, Best moments of my life are, are here now. You know they're not they're not gone. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> then it looks like you get uh, some some shit popping again. Oh, I know how a mom feels when you raise three. Um, I know. Um, before becoming a mom, there are so many things I wanted to do. Looking forward to the real me. Who will start now? Uh Yeah, I figure. You got to <laughs> feel like you're you're putting your heart into into those lyrics, you know, because that's. You know, that's coming from somewhere. Yeah, I figured, uh, and it's funny too, without even kind of having to like do a translation that a lot of uh, like the lyrics probably would be on that type time. Mm -hmm. Like I said, about either like unfinished business or about just, you know, finally being able to get back into the the world that you were in and just things of that nature. And then some of the mommy bars in the sense of like, you know, surprise, (laughs) well, no, no one was going to go that route. (laughs) The, uh, The... I'll raise you bitches. <laughs> oh, you, you trying to make some bars? <laughs> the same way I raised these kids, I'm, I'm raising you K-pop. <laughs> they was like, we liked your journey. <laughs> you saying rap line going to be a little more feisty? <laughs> yeah, I thought rap line might have been a little bit more feisty, but um, is, you funny as hell. <laughs> but nah, it's it's. I, I like yeah. this. Um, I think you you said it before. Uh, like, not only is it decent for them, but I think it does give a lot of people who either you know might have wanted to quit music because of an incident, or just who haven't had an opportunity really to show the world their talent. Yeah. Um, hope really just to yeah. be like, damn, like you know, if these women were able to kind of you know take a step away from everything handle what they needed to handle and you know made sure everything was good at home and then decided to come back and are still blessing us with good music than i can because like you said outside of Mm -hmm. just being a mom we don't talk about you know injuries that popped up or maybe if it was a learning curve with some things where uh, i'm not gonna name groups but let's say like some people in particular groups might have had to like you know learn korean or learn japanese and learn something and they didn't grasp it as fast but, you know, two or three years passed and they wind up being fluent in all those languages now. And it's just like, yeah. well, you know, this was the only thing that was stopping me now. And I've got past that and yeah. I still have a story to tell because that's all music is, is just really just telling a bunch of different stories and being able to kind of let people know 
like get your clip off essentially and shit like yeah um, and honestly just to piggyback briefly on that is like mm-hmm. even if you're talking about you know uh let's just say let's just say second gen for instance mm-hmm. like around that time um there wasn't nearly as much um exposure with internet and kind of you know social media and stuff like that and it's um the only reason i'm bringing that up of course is because even if like you were okay but you just didn't have the eyes on you to kind of market that talent Mm -hmm. Uh, that's where it ended up being a thing where it's like okay the company wasn't making enough money off you to sustain your journey so Mm -hmm. it's like now you got to break up and it's just like nothing was wrong um you know talent was there and everything it's just you know the eyes weren't um and it's just now like even things like this where it's like now there's so much more opportunity for eyes to to be on you and especially if you have like a unique story and you're you're pushing a unique message um you know with something like this it's it's really incredible to see um Mm -hmm. but i love that there's now a much more kind of fruitful market for everyone to you know seemingly eat because you know you're able to be seen by so many people and so many people are able to follow your journey Mm -hmm. um yeah this this is really amazing and honestly um just to actually talk about like the the musicality of everything uh and what was displayed here I thought the the hook and everything was really catchy. Um, Mm -hmm. Like, I I really, like, enjoyed that. Certainly, uh, you know, the vocals uh, that were kind of trading off throughout there. Um, I did like the instances of the rap line, and certainly, as you had pointed out, you know, some of the lyrics and everything, just how much kind of more hard-hitting they are, you know, knowing the story behind everything, or at least, you know, the implications of the story that we have up to this point. Um, I I really like um, the elements of the choreo. I think it was really creative, but also, like, something that um, it didn't feel like they had to do, like, backflips or anything. Uh, you know, <laughs> like it, it didn't feel like it was anything that was like, you know what I mean? Super taxing. Yeah, like mm-hmm. it was, um, but it was creative. And that's honestly like, and I, I'm not saying that lightly because it's like, you know, with how many groups there are, how many choreos there are and everything mm-hmm. to even make something that's unique within that um, is just something that's like, you know, you got to kind of admire that in its own right as well. Um, I thought that, you know, definitely the, the staging and the effects of everything, like it wasn't something that was super, um, like it, it felt like very, you know, lavish and high budget, but it mm-hmm. also wasn't in the sense that, you know, you're in a room with white and kind of like a, a green screen or some kind of thing to project upon with, you know, lighting. Um, like, basically, they, they maximized a, a, a fairly intimate setting, and, that, and that's basically what I was complimenting in that regard. Um, definitely the beat switches and everything, too. Like, they kept everything feeling fresh, um, you know, kind of all the way throughout. I'm excited to see, um, you know, where this goes. Um, because I know, and I'm sure every song might not have to be specific to kind of that message and everything. Mm-hmm. And I know that's something that's certainly, um, you know, a question that's begged, you know, kind of as far as like if you, you know, had to, you know, release other songs and other projects, like anything. But um, I do think it's something that is certainly, um, like there, it feels like you could always talk about something inspiring or kind of coming from, you know, nothing or struggling or anything. And, and stuff like that is always going to be relevant um, and relatable, of course. I guess I'm I'm just curious, kind of what like um, what their identity is going to be, kind of as a group and everything, you know, um, beyond this. And if it is this, they're, they're certainly succeeding. I'm just curious as far as like you know, if you wanted to pursue more of this style and you didn't quite get the chance to, versus someone who might have wanted more of this style. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like kind of how you merge and kind of make those things um, cohesive as a group, I suppose. No, um, I get it because yeah. it's I, I'm assuming MMD is Mama Doll. Um, okay. So, but I do hear your thing because it's like I think you respectfully not trying to call this a gimmick, but oh, um, no, not at yeah, all. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I get what you mean because you asked an interesting question where it's like, if this is the approach that y'all want to take now because y'all have a lot of things to get off your chest mm-hmm. about the subject matter, is this the route you take a year later or you know like kind of after the first album to where you might have got your clip off already about yeah. certain issues as far as like why well, my mom. And it's like, okay, cool, tell us that story. But after that story, just like any other artist, it's like, yeah, what's next? And truthfully, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying in the respect that, like, mm-hmm. I wonder if they themselves are kind of like, you know, have, you know. Other stories and other things. Well, I mean, just do. like, like, no, like, as a group, kind of, if we're doing this, what, you know, what we want to do next or if we want to do anything next. Mm-hmm. But just, you know what I mean, like, trajectory of group and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but the reason I was uh, more so bringing that up is to say, even if they didn't, or if they said, no, this is all we want to do, or this is the only thing we want to talk about. Got a lot of content. You, you're going to have a lot of, <laughs> absolutely, you're going to have a lot of content. Um, but it's it's certainly something, too, in the respect that it's like, if you want to be that group that's essentially like, you know, we want to be that role model for others to be able to look up to, mm-hmm. it might be easier to kind of keep things, you know, more focused on that. 
um, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. But mm -hmm. then also there's the other side of it where it's like, okay, well maybe someone can find, you know, a song that's outside of that that they enjoy mm -hmm. and then read into your story. Like, oh, I like the song. Let me check out more about the, this mm -hmm. you know, group of ladies or whatever. Um, and then, oh, wow, this is what they, who they are, what they represent and everything. And then find them that way. You know what I mean? No, so basically absolutely. all that to say the message is so important. That is the most wide of a net to cast by focusing specifically on this or kind of branching out and then hoping others, you know what I mean? No, I don't um, exactly But that's more so just me, mm -hmm. like, kind of putting myself, you know, we, we said the producer and hat the producer on. the producer hat on. Uh, or kind of like a studio hat on or whatever. Just, just kind of thinking, like, um, what sort of, you know, that thought process would be, you know, for them or for anyone behind the scenes who's kind of helping, you know, the direction of, the, of where they're trying to take everything. All that to say, whichever route they take or whatever, I'm, I'm intrigued, you know. Yeah. Um, they certainly, you know, have an incredible story to tell, and you know, I hope it just reaches as many people as possible, and you know, reignites that spark within them. Yeah, you did say something that was interesting because you said that they'd be like great role models for people, mm -hmm. and uh, even on here, they had a bar, and they literally was just like mom equals idol. Um, so you know, like moms are role models, and it's just like aren't idols typically a part of being an idol is being a role model as well. So that's, it's, yeah, you that's, know, that's really true. So it's like a lot of. I can see a lot of that overlapping and that message being able mm -hmm. to be uh, like displayed even further. No, certainly. Um, so it's they have a lot of content and like 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 you said, putting that producer hat on. This could be with any group where you know someone would be like, "Well, for you know our group's concept is we're clowns," and it's just like, oh, "Okay, cool." You know, your first album might be called Circus. Um, you know, an album could be called Joke. Like, you know, it's just, you know, it's, it's, I see where y'all going with it, but like after a couple albums, yeah. what else is like, you know, the gimmick, yeah. what's you're the, like, what's the like, beginning, middle and end? You're like, no, it's an identity thing. It's when we take off the mask that, you know, people, <laughs> people don't want to see who we really are. You they said, wanna see. You said that's what they want to see. It's, it's about identity. Yeah. Our fourth uh, project is called Laugh Now, Cry Later. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually hot. Somebody might be taking notes from <laughs> So I'm like, has anyone done it yet? No, <laughs> Not everyone dressed up as clowns there. <laughs> the choreo, probably crazy. The choreo, right? Background dancers, you got like, like people jump, spinning. Jump through like, the flaming rings. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, see, I'm seeing the... I'm seeing <laughs> so I wasn't on board right away, but now I see. <laughs> yeah, you feel like that producer leaned in a little bit. Like, All right. <laughs> Thank you, Carvin. Jump yeah, in the uh, jump in the comments. Um, tell us how y'all feel about a lot of stuff me and Kurt talked about. Because, like I said, we we haven't really talked about it. I feel like at all ever on this channel about yeah, childbirth uh, and just what idols have to go through, mm -hmm. and uh, just even the process of that. Because and now that I'm thinking about it, I don't even know what idol successfully like you know. And I'm saying like from what I, my knowledge. Had like kids and then you know was on a hiatus, ironically, you know, for like a year and a half. Yeah. Then came back and did anything because I'm trying to think of even the the second gen groups that we've done. Have any do any of them have kids or maybe, anything maybe like it's just that? something that's not said out in the public or anything like that. Um, but, that's true but, too. But certainly something that I you know haven't noticed. Um, it'd be interesting to know. Yeah, because even even as far or may, as or maybe people who went into acting afterwards or kind of segued into other you know uh, sort of venues or something, but yeah, to my knowledge, I'm I'm not sure honestly. Damn, because even as far as men idols, I'm trying to think about it because uh, I think I had heard that like Taeyang when we did the vibe joint, his wife they have two kids or he or at least he's expecting a second kid like mm -hmm. right now, wow. so it's just like that's one idol that we've heard like you know have his kids. And um, obviously, I think other people, maybe Rain has a kid too, if I'm not mistaken. But okay. see, that's a second gen artist as well. So, but it, we, we've never had these conversations yet up here. <laughs> Jump in the comments, right. let us know if your favorite idol is hot and kids. So, you know. <laughs> we did talk about Jim. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's like, he has a family. <laughs> yeah. That's um, funny. Jump in the comments. Give us a little bit more information on this, um, like in general, because I feel like I asked a bunch of questions. Please answer them. Um, thank you again, Carmen. Thank, thank you, Redeemers. We love y'all. We're going to holler at y'all. Take care.